Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, uh, reaching out to you from London, England. Um, I decided to take a trip through Europe this week. I'm going to go to London, Paris, and Barcelona. Um, I've got some Black Wealth Academy students that are in those cities, and I hope to get a chance to catch up with some of them, uh, meet in person, but also I've got some other things I want to handle while I'm there. And, w and one of the things that I saw as soon as I got here was um, I read this a really unfortunate, really sad story about a, a brother by the name of Bryce Williams, or his real name was Vester Flam in the third, I believe, uh, he changed his name to Bryce apparently to um, fit in with the journalistic profession. And uh, Bryce uh, committed a, a really um, pretty heinous crime. Uh, the police are saying that he shot two of his former co-workers uh, on the air, um, and he didn't just uh, commit this this shooting. He actually left a manifesto. Uh, he was trying to make a statement. He was using social media. He uh, he he did it deliberately on camera. Um, he w he was a man that had uh, a lot of scores to settle. Uh, he claimed that these um, that these victims were not uh, random. He claimed, in, in fact, when I read uh, some of what they said in, in his manifesto, uh, he was stating that the hollow point bullets had their names on them. And he was also he also claims he was driven by the shooting shooting down in um, Charleston, South Carolina uh, uh, by Dylan Roof. Um, and so, uh, you know, this this is kind of a um, an interesting and very unfortunate, uh, somewhat predictable uh, kind of scenario in the sense that uh, when, when, I, when the, at least for me, when I first saw that this, this man was black and the victims were white, I thought about the broader implications in terms of the growing racial uh, animosity that, that's kind of coming to the surface in America. It's always been there, but now with social media and black people kind of coming together and becoming a stronger unit, uh, you, you're seeing a greater clash. You're seeing more clash than you saw in the past because uh, for many, many, many years, many decades, um, uh, whites control black thinking and black unity by controlling media. They were able to determine when and how black people were able to communicate with each other. Uh, and now they can't control that anymore. Now we can talk to each other on Twitter, Facebook, email, whatever it is. And so uh, as a result of that, what I've noticed is that over the last seven or eight years, since Obama was elected, America has become blacker. America became more, black America became, excuse me, when I say America became blacker, I mean black America has become blacker. That's what I meant to say. So when Obama was elected, uh, black people became emboldened. They said, oh my goodness, we didn't know we could get a black man into office. Uh, he, again, used social media to make that happen. Without social media, you wouldn't have a black president. And then uh, through the years, as people became a little more, a little more uh, disillusioned by the fact that things, the results that they were hoping for weren't coming through the Obama administration. At the same time, you had these racial tragedies kind of occurring around the country, these shootings and things like that, police beatings that were gaining attention. You started seeing um, just a heightened consciousness amongst black people. So there were many things that I could have said 10 years ago that I did say 10 years ago where people thought were, were telling me that I was crazy. People were telling me that I was going to get in trouble, that you're going to lose your job, you you know, etc. Now, many of those very same people are coming to me and saying, oh my goodness, can you believe the way they're shooting our kids in the street? Can you believe the, the way that they're treating us. Can you believe mass incarceration? Can you believe the racism on my job? You know, so uh, what I'm really seeing is that you kind of have that that trend occurring along with sort of a heightened um, a heightened kind of um, uh, uh, sensitivity among whites. Uh, you got a lot more white people carrying guns now. Uh, you've got the Dylan Roofs out here in the world that are that are seeking to uh, wreak havoc. Um, and honestly, I just see. Um, I agree with a lot of what Minister Farrakhan has said in the sense that um, it's just uh, going to be um – it could be problematic for the future of this country. Um, it, it's getting to this point where uh, we're no longer sort of allowing ourselves to just be abused. Um, and really, honestly, th that's the anger that I saw come out when I when I read about um, this shooting with uh, with Bryce or Vester, whichever one you want to call him. Um, no, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I am not a fan of the idea of shooting or killing or harming anybody who has not done harm to you. Um, I'm definitely a fan of what Malcolm X said in terms of retaliating or not, or, or self-defense and maybe some degree of retaliation uh, for things that are directly done to you. Um, uh, you know, so, for example, somebody hurt your, your child. Um, I don't if you retaliate, I'm not going to hold that against you because I don't think that black people are able to rely on the government and the justice system to get the justice they deserve.
but when you retaliate against specific individuals who haven't physically harmed you because they're part of an ethnic group that has oppressed people that you care about, that becomes a little bit fuzzy. And that's kind of what uh, I think makes this somewhat controversial. I think that even though most black people can't uh, relate to the idea of going in and killing co-workers, uh, a lot of black people can relate to the idea of enduring so much discrimination in the workplace that you are tempted to uh, to lash out at somebody, uh, tempted to be violent towards somebody, tempted to uh, go off on somebody. Uh, a lot of people have felt that way, and I think that should be laid on the table. Um, you know, when we did a survey in the Black Wealth Boot Camp, and I asked the students, how many of you have been victims of racial discrimination on the job? N like 97% of the respondents said yes. 97%. Now, these are ed these are not, you know, thug-type people. These are not people that are out here trying to break the law. These are hard-working black people, all of whom paid money to be in this class, to educate themselves. So, you're not talking about you know, criminals and, and, and the, the quote-unquote bad uh, black people that uh, that America likes to, to, to throw out there. You're talking about law-abiding people who at one point believed in the American dream, many of whom went to college, uh, many of whom wanted to do the right things with their lives, uh, all, almost all of whom were uh, rejected by this system, all of whom went to work and dealt with uh, so much um, abuse that they were filing reports with HR, nothing was getting done. They were filing uh, complaints with the EEOC, nothing was getting done. They thought about filing lawsuits but didn't have the money to do it. Um, you know, and, and so people are tired of that stuff. People are tired of it. Now, I think that uh, Vester, obviously, uh, he went overboard. Uh, he, he, you know, you, you don't want to go kill people because you'll go to jail for that. And then it's just, it's just not a healthy way to respond to things. But what's really happening in America is that, you know, when I, when is that if you don't address uh, racial inequality and racial discrimination in the workplace, what you're doing is you're you're creating a community of people that are marginalized, who are who are boiling emotionally, who are just so angry so bitter uh, that they're get some are getting to the point where they say you know what no I'm not gonna let you just inflict pain on me I'm going to share the pain distribute the pain and Minister Farrakhan actually brought this up this week where he was saying you know we're just gonna take some of the pain and let you feel some of the pain too so you'll know about what it's like to be me for a couple of days uh, so so, uh, so you know, when you read about uh, what, what Vester was, was uh, complaining about, the complaints he filed, uh, and I do believe that a lot of this was true. He talked about being called a monkey on the job. He talked about uh, the the uh, people in the station making jokes about a black man who got killed. Uh, who had, I think that something green was in his teeth somehow, and they said that he had collard green stuck in his teeth. Um, you know, and, and, and all these other things. And it's not it's not unfathomable. I mean, you're talking about news networks, most of whom are 100% white because they're rejecting every black person who applies for the job. Uh, they're in the state of Florida, which is known as the place where Trayvon was killed, Jordan Davis was killed. Lots of racism occurs in that state. Um, you know, so it's not out of the question that that this brother was pushed over the edge and it do, and and so the responsibility for this incident doesn't just lie on him it also relies on the very system that creates people like him uh, if you look all throughout history anytime you've had somebody who's responded to uh, what they perceive to be abuse in a in a violent or angry way a lot of times it's because uh, they were radicalized by something that was done that was um, uh, just heinously abusive um, you know, you go to the Middle East and you see a lot of young men who were, would have been good people, who would have done normal things with their lives, but they become radicalized and joined uh, in, 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 into movements because they saw their, their little brother or their child get blown up at a daycare by a U.S. drone and saw that the United States did not give a damn about killing their baby. Um, you know, so, so what I would just say is this, um, you know, I, I, I really am not in any way uh, able to condone uh, the way uh, Vesta handled this situation, but I, I I think that if we sort of look at this just as a, a deranged lunatic, you know, committed a heinous act, um, I think you're going to miss the undertone here. The undertone is that workplace discrimination makes some people so mad they want to roll up in there and kick somebody's ass every day. Um, it doesn't mean they're going to come in with a gun. It doesn't mean they're actually going to do it. But I know a whole lot of people 
who uh, who go to work and they're they're hurting. I mean, they're they're really hurting because they're not being treated fairly. Um, now, my answer to this, and this is why I created the Black Wealth Boot Camp and all that. My answer is, I've told black people, look, I want to help you lead a mass exodus away from the corporate plantation. I deliberately call it the corporate plantation because that's how you feel. You feel like you're being controlled by somebody else, being mistreated by other people. But uh, some people aren't leaving. Some people are staying. And when those people stay, um, uh, if you don't address racism, you're going to have some some volatile situations, some clashes that occur as a result of that. So that's it. That's all I really want to say on that. Um, uh, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. Please leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. I am gone. Peace.